Yeah, I'll, I'll give you that. At the end of the day, though, no Johns. You need to play better when I land. Uh, the middle lane's just not going to do it. Oh, nine and five. Got to dial that up just a little bit. One Night at Land, looking to uh, tie things up. We'll go to Peaks and Bands right now. Passion with the first choice here. Bands coming out soon. I expect to see much of the Freya and the Bacchus. Passion doesn't want to first pick it. That's what that tells me right away. I want to see One Night at Land switch up their mid laner to be more, not passive, but just more mobile, right? Going for a Poseidon, you have the extra mobility, mm -hmm. but Giannis was available there, and they last picked the Poseidon when they already saw four of the five picks. They saw the Achilles, they saw the Bacchus, and the Erlang Shine in the draft of the Passion, so they needed mm -hmm. to figure out a way to survive in the mid lane. Giannis, that was their best way out. There was a couple of other options as well if you want to look at mobility. I mean, you can have conversations about, you know, Cripple versus other characters with dashes, but Giannis, not the only one. Open mind. Passion and Lan now in the pick phase. No Arthur, no Freya, and no Kernanos to tie up with that first or uh, that first preliminary ban of Bacchus. So the first pick here for Passion will be the Achilles. I like this choice. Uh, this is, again, flex pick Jengaro looked so fantastic on it last game, or Delny can pick it up and, and play fantastic in the short side. I don't think I, I don't think I want uh, Hamster to really play it, but you can definitely flop between those two. Yeah, there's a lot of flexibility with that pick. I don't expect it to be switched up in game number two with how much success yeah. Jengaro had it in game number one. And I like the fact that One Night of Land move away from the Vamana. It did not work for them in game number one. Me personally, I don't highly prioritize Vamana simply because it's a little bit of a bait and switch. Like sure, it's a god that has success if you're already winning. Yeah. And that's where any soul laner can fill in that plug anyway. If you win your lane, then you could be playing Sun Wukong, for example, and still do the same job, if not better. Exactly. You mentioned this before uh, off broadcast. It's a win more character, right? Sure. So you, as you said, that you could plug any character into that position Position, where w what would you rather have had in your hands in that solo lane? Uh, in that solo lane, when they picked Vamana, well, they first picked Vamana, yeah. which was the issue. Like, you don't normally want to ever first pick your solo lane anyway, because you want to have it like <laughs> later on for the counter. That's matchup. when the solo laners rule the world. Yeah, but basically. There's coaches and mid laners and hunters. I mean, <laughs> I would only want my solo laner right away if I can get Arthur. Other than that, I don't care. <laughs> basically. Well, the first round of picks are already locked in. Achilles, Hachiman, and Ryzen. One of the more powerful mid picks right now. And they'll be going head to head against One Night at Lands, Soul, Wukong, and there's the mobility. We've got the Giannis man. The God of Doors will be walking through walls here. Our second round, Bands as well, locked in. No Susano, no Odin, no Turtle Man, and no Bear Mom. Passion looking towards the tanks. One night at land, looking towards the junglers. I love the Giannis pick already, and important for them to ban away the Susano to make sure they're not going to get chased down sure. through the jet stream. Very important. The Hunter pick already there with Hachiman means you don't have to worry about the ROM snipes coming through. Mm -hmm. And now you're going to have just more team fighting aspect with this Terra. I like One Night at Land's draft much better than the first game. I think that it's very safe, and even if they're behind, they have the potential to still defend. Well, Passion going to round out their scat lineup here with Arlong Shen and the Hera. So tank shields coming through. Little even their car even their carries are going to be tanky, which is going to be problematic for one night at land. They do pick up a Terra to be tanky themselves, and the Mercury, and that's a uh, big crits. Certainly a way to get rid of those shields. I like one night at land's draft. Double globals, Giannis and Mercury. Passion this time around are the ones going for the magical ADC. It's actually yep. no, they have the Hachiman. So between the Ryzen and the Hera, maybe support Hera? We've seen Hera in the jungle. Hera can Probably. also solo. It'll be interesting. Not my choice. Casters, please help us out and tell us where players are playing in game two. Tom turned his notes over because of this draft. Let's go into game two. It's going to be passion because one night at land. And where is this hair going? It's absolutely hair in the jungle. Taco, how could it have been anything else, really? Like, how, how could they not have known? Okay, you say this. Right, But I I'm do. telling you right now, Hera jungle actually slaps. And people do not realize it. Well, a chance here for Delny to come in for the steal. I think it was a little bit too early, so J-Pro will indeed be able to secure his own speed buff. Glad we're getting to see some Mercury, as it feels like he had a bit of a drop-off after the, the change with the way Golden Blade interacts with him, as the dual lane of One Night and Land went right to the purple buff and seeded this initial lane. 
and they are indeed able to actually have the purple buff invade. It looks like it's Passion who grab it. It's right there around Hamster. So one night land getting nothing for this start. Mildly close call though for I'm the Hamster. It fell a little bit low there, but Keegan just did not have the passive worked up just yet. Without those boosted heat AAs, I don't think he really had much of a chance of bringing Hamster down. Uh, Hamster shrugs it off, and now they can come in with some help from this auto attack speed from Fatal Ghost and some of these clingy of autos and clear this wave quite quickly and head back to their own purple. So an excellent start for Passion's duo lane, which they needed on the other side since they weren't quite able to get the speed buff steal. One thing I have to point out, though, it might be here at jungle, but taking the mage's blessing over the assassin's blessing oh, yeah. for jungling, I, I think that Whoa. this is going to end up possibly hurting Jengaru in the long run. Had it been an assassin's blessing, I think I would have 100% been on board here, but that mage's blessing just makes me want to reconsider. You just lose so much golden experience when you're splitting camps. That's right. There's a lot of, of farming efficiency that comes from the... Assassin's Blessing is why so many times they feel like they're, they have to get it. You know, they could benefit, I'm sure, a lot of the times from other blessings, depending on what gods you take. But you got to pick this up as Delny back on a warrior over here on the solo side. Sun Wukong up against the Achilles. Putting the Achilles, it feels like where he's intended to go instead of the great game Jungaru had on him last time. He wanted the Hera instead as they get some nice trades here in the solo lane. Probably not much kill potential here unless someone really steps too far forward. Delon is probably at more risk than Pitbull on the Sun Wukong. Sun Wukong, I think, a little bit safer having that cudgel poke. Also, the 72 transformations. Right. I, I mean, I know Erling's got transformations as well. It's 72, it's 75. I think it's 72 for both of them, I think. 100% sure. There's, a, there's a mild possibility here, but at the, at, at the end of the day, all Pitbull's really looking for is whatever poke he can find to set up Jiporo as easily as possible in case the Mercury ever decides to look for uh, a, a gank. It's not really all that common, I think, to prioritize ganking warriors in the solo lane, but still a possibility. Just like this rotation here, but I am the hamster <laughs> gonna go ahead and collect Keegan right away. Soul Reaper trying to make his way over. There. They need to back off. Yeah, they gotta get out of here. I don't know if they recognize that there's still plenty more coming in terms of cavalry. Hamster does still have the turtle form, gets away from the portal and the special delivery and the EI Jutsu stun is there. They just barely make it out. That was well played by Fatal Ghost and Hamster to be able to pick up the first blood and get away without paying anything. For a second there, I thought that Fatal Ghost was going to push into the jungle to look for that purple buff invade, and I think then Soul Reaper and J4 would have definitely had enough time to, to just focus the Hachi. But with that rotation having been made, Soul Reaper didn't get a chance to farm out that last mid wave, so Crimson was level 5, but he messes up the confirmation on that red buff. Yeah, Jitsu stun comes through. That sets up the trade. Fatal Ghost gets one, Keegan gets the other. Both supports go down. That was almost a lot worse, though, Taco. So at the very least, uh, they they make it one for one on the side of one night at land. That was almost a clean pick for Hamster and Fatal Ghost. Beggars can't be choosers, and when you're the ADC in that situation, you're not, you're not choosing who you get the kill on. You just want that last hit. They're just happy to take it. You know, Taco, I was looking for more Pitbull songs last time because I already made my one timber joke um, since Pitbull's playing as Pitbull. Um, and I, I, is that it? Does he have any other hits besides? Dale. What is it? If you, if you just shout Dale from time to time. Okay, I'll do that. I'll weave that in. Thanks, Taco, for the backup. On no that. problem. Uh, I'll, I'll make sure that whenever Pitbull makes a, my, a nice play, I'll, I'll pick between Timber and, and, and Dale. And there's also, I mean, if you're really feeling uh, a, a little bit adventurous today, fans, I kind of you am. could always just do the, the DJ Khaled effect with Pitbull's name instead. Instead of DJ Khaled, I just yell Pitbull. You just yell Pitbull instead, because Pitbull does that too from okay. time to time. Yeah. They're both. You know. Either or, whenever floats your boat, you know, we're not we're not saying that you should do either one of them. It sounds like you are, and I, I will. I kind of want to see you do both of them. I sure will. But I'm not really sure how you're going to work that in here. I'm just going to find, you know, I'll find a way. Life finds a way, and uh, I'll find a way to say Pitbull. Dale! <laughs> this cast, this hamster, gets stunned out of the roots there as well, but he manages to get away with the turtle form. After this early start, it looks like Forger Vulcan and Keegan have done enough, Taco, to at least get back to relevance. Keegan on a proper... Attack, auto attack based character this time. Execute threshold for Pitbull, but Delny was patient. He was going to heal back up anyway, so good job waiting. Passion might have had the. Well, they have the, the kill board advantage by one, if you call Gross. that an advantage, but uh, I'm mostly just pointing out the fact that everything's pretty much stabilized for, for both of these teams here. One Night at Land and Passion, both within a, a couple hundred gold of each other. So, uh, very 
small leads and yes. small advantages. I think most of those coming out of the duo lane since Forger Vulcan still is yet to hit level five, but should be off of this wave. Yep, right there. That secondary creep's gonna do it. So now having that terror ultimate, that could end up shifting the tides of some of these dual lane exchanges. It absolutely could as the totem gets dropped one more time. Looks like Passion were able to grab their first one, if I'm not mistaken, after the way this early game has gone so far for Pitbull. Not a big surprise, he's able to find some nice poke with the cudgel from range, so not a big surprise he's able to get a little bit of easier damage onto the objective than perhaps Delmi, who's not going to let the bat go through, just bullying out on the solo side. Fatal Ghost and I, the answer, both sitting nicely at level 6 even. But what we haven't had a chance to see just yet is hmm. that huge through space and time rotation. Right, and That's what we've really go. been waiting on, I think, and, and that's what will really crack this game wide open is whichever lane Soul Reaper actually decides to gank, well, it might just be the mid lane. It looks like it is. That created him a path back in, but special delivery off the mark too, and Jungaru has turned things around, but he might be a little bit too far forward. We need Argus back here to keep J-Pro off me. He goes right into the ultimate that does hit Jungaru, but he has the shield, and Delny gets the kill. What a bait from Jungaru. He handled the 1v2 perfectly. Fatal Ghost trying to handle his own 1v1 right now in the duo lane, but I used you two off the mark, and I think that was more so to just disengage over everything else. Eagle Eye Shots also having some trouble finding a home. One of them will connect, and 99 damage per auto on those twos. Definitely nothing for Keegan to take lightly, but that mid lane engagement, it, it just felt so forced yes. and unnecessary. Right. By the time, Jiporo, if, if you're having a sonic boom into a tower at level six, you probably just shouldn't do it. And remember how we're thinking like, oh, well, they're just gonna look for this gank here in the middle lane onto the Hera. Now, as it's not the mid lane Hera that they're ganking necessarily, right? It's actually Jinkaru in the jungle who's gonna be picking up his speed here now. So when, and it's not as if there was enough on cooldown to even force it. She had the ultimate, had the beat, had everything. And so she was able to make it out. Where I would have wanted to see the punish against this Hera would have been using this Yana's through space and time on the actual speed buff invades for the early game. And we're still mildly in early game starting to, I, I think, approach the exiting of laning phases. But even with the Crimson being on the Ryzen, I definitely think there was still a little bit of wiggle room here for, for Soul Reaper to through space and time deep into Jengar's speed buff. And... Whether or not they got the speed buff is kind of irrelevant. More importantly, they could have just looked to kill and smother this Hera early on before she started to become a problem. Well, now they're finally showing this aggression, not around the speed buff itself, but certainly into the order side jungle. And I think that this is the right call. It's Crimson, who's further forward, but he still has the Thunder Crash and is able to use that to disengage. But all it takes is one root and Crimson's forced into the, thun into the Tycho drums. That's nice for one night at land to force that out. Crimson don't mind. He'll bang those drums all the time, whenever he wants, because that's just, I, I think that that was the right shot call from Crimson. Right. If he doesn't use the Tycho drums there, I, I definitely see Soul Reaper and J4 are looking to collapse, because well, he, he was already rooted in place. And he had just used the Thunder Crash, so he does not want to play. He just wants to bang on the drum all day, does Crimson, and it works in his favor. He's able to get out of there safely, and he'll have it back up before too long. He's got some cooldown already in place. Skip to the Mage's Blessing, though, so doesn't have that sometimes free you get. Mage's Blessing, or cooldown for the Mage's Blessing. In fact, they gotta be careful. J-Pro charging up the Sonic Boom. He might go in, but we also have the Man Fight between Fatal Ghost and Ke Keegan. Except Keegan gets Fatal Ghost Ultimate for what seemed like nothing. He charges up the Heat and Fatal Ghost I think it already used the Aijitsu. That's the only thing I could imagine that would want him or force him into wanting to use that, that mounted archery for an escape right. as opposed to saving it for, for later on. But these two hunters, they've been left mostly undisturbed this game in comparison to match one. It does seem as if they've been kind of left to, to handle their farm. I think it's because One Night at Land are trying to put some more attention onto Jungaro and this Hera and not let him farm for free. Right, when we say these hunters had a free time, then Hamster rotates over and punishes. That's just a great space, though, for this purple buff invade, which does go successfully. Vulcan wants to punish, but by himself, this Terra is not enough, and Hamster is able to shrug it off. Not sure that Jiporo really wants to waste any time either. Was thinking about investing the Sonic Boom there, but recognizes that the kill potential just isn't really there. Crimson will lay down a ward and then watch it immediately get taken out by the Mercury. 
you know, so he'll watch his spacing. Considering Taco that he used it so liberally earlier, we meant to hold that thought. As there is aggression in the duo lane, that means that it's time for the old different for Dravulcan. Through space and time comes through as well. Before Dravulcan gets on it right back in, but the through space and time means Hamster's been cut off. He goes right though into that turtle form. That's enough for him to escape. And now it's Jungaru's time to drop in the Argus. Hello! As he comes right on in. That's Soul Reaper down. Sonic Boom allows J Pro to reposition, but another one fight for passion. The polymorph is what I'm really paying most note of because that polymorph just stopped Soul Reaper from being able to cast another portal. He didn't have the beads available, used them fairly early on, and I love it from, from Jengaru. That's the impact that a Hera can make just dropping Argus. And it was Hamster that ended up being the target early on, right, too? Because they do they come through the portal exactly like you'd expect, but who does J-Pro hit the special delivery but this Erlong Shen who's got, you know, tank boots, Guardian's Blessing, Energy Talisman. I mean, he was not worried at all and about I, that engagement. I, I hate to bring this up again, but it was just another forced engagement from right. One Night at Land. You had the disengage already from Passion's dual lane. They already weren't interested in pursuing as soon as that through space and time happened. But then Soul Reaper and Jeporu tried to commit. They pull away from their tower line. They were the safety of the tower line, I should say. And that's more than enough for Jengaru to make a, a pretty impactful rotation. And I was just about to talk about the decisions on when to use these Sonic Booms from J-Pro. And we have not seen one yet. It's only 12 minutes in. That's particularly excited me. He had to use this one defensively, I think, to get back to his own Tier 1 tower because he was past everyone else on the side of Passion. But, I mean, if he, was, he hasn't gotten enough out of it, I don't feel like. He did hit three people on that last one, though. They couldn't do anything with it. It was right. pretty much useless in that situation. But, <laughs> but at least it was what he needed to do, I think, to get right. back to the safety of his tower without expending the sonic boom there. I think the only other option he would have had is to just run deeper into enemy territory. And as a Mercury, when your team has already died slash forced out and, and forced into backing, I don't think you really want to spend your time praying that you're going to be able to find some sort of counter invade farm. I do agree that once we're already down that decision tree, ulting back in was the best choice. But again, I don't know if we want to be down that decision tree as J-Pro is able to loop around the backside, but he can find nothing there. Crimson never really in any danger. Look at the extreme proxying happening by Pitbull down between the Tier 2 and Phoenix. Cylinders do whatever they want, it feels like, as Passion group up around the Gold Fury. Poor Javokin, now damage. under fire, and what? Crimson not even going to waste any time. I mean... Jengaru already took he care the of the dirty work, but Crimson is just here laying down the law, it seems, with this Ryzen. That damage is just unfathomable what? right now for one night at land. He has the Oni. Maybe he bought it when he when he finished it, when he backed right after he was dead, but it seems like he had some protection there. It wasn't enough. He got shredded between Crimson and Jengaru in that engagement, and Delny is not done yet. He's still pushing forward. He's creating space for this Gold Fury that the rest of his team is working on, but isn't enough. Soul Reaper and J-Pro come rejoin the fray, and that forces them off the objective for now. But Delny's not done with his zoning duties. Pitbull must go into the 72 transformations and leave, and that will be it for the Gold Fury for now. Crimson dashing and aggressively onto Soul Reaper, just understanding it's Giannis. What's he going to do? They got to turn around onto Delny, yeah. He's been left alone too long. That will pull out the ultimate from this Terra. Sonic Boom's charged and hits two. There's a big ultimate coming out finally from J-Pro, but they still have not capitalized. How's Delny still drawing breath on this Earth? He's going to walk right out of there. Delany just actually slowly walked out of there. Yes! In the middle of everybody, One Night at Land just seemed to have lost sight, but Jengaru hasn't lost sight of this Mercury just yet. J4 is going to be the first casualty to fall, and what looked like such a promising situation for One Night at Land <laughs> is now being turned completely against them. Okay, so the Tiger finally caught up to the Turtle, and that is going to be enough. I was just told for production that Delny made it out with 20 HP, but he'll eventually pay the price. Not before he gets a return kill, though, to even things back up in his team's favor. Pitbull's low. I don't know if he wants this fight with Fatal Ghost, especially with the Evil Eye proct or Eagle Eye, rather, which gives him a little bit of extra range. Jungaru here as well, but one night at land. Finally, Taco, finally fall back. Oh, that's what Crimson just wants you to believe because he's yeah. wrapping right around the backside of Pitbull. Somersault Clown is going to be the, the safety net, though, that Pitbull was, I think, relying on in case he found something in this situation, oh, but that dash is cut short. Nowhere left to run, and that's just another one.
for Crimson. And it might be another one in Forger Vulcan as well. Remember, we already found out he's not that tanky, but Argus gives up on the chase. Unfortunate. That should have been a kill. But instead, Forger Vulcan's on his way out of there. I think Jangaro accidentally toggled Argus off. Yeah, maybe so. That is rough, Taco. Well, now we'll try this Gold Fury yet again. Gold Fury take two. J-Pro nearby has the Sonic Boom. You gotta avoid Argus, who's still lurking around. Thunder Crash goes in aggressive from Crimson yet again, but Gold Fury has been leashed for now. Fatal Ghost, though, gonna fall incredibly oh, low. Jay Poro trying to give chase and will finally manage to bring somebody down from Passion. And it will be the Hachi Men. I, I think that was just a nice major look that yes. actually sent him back to base. Use the spe or the Ulton rather to get back close enough to finish him off. Forge of Vulcan is trying to zone, but he's being chunked by Crimson. But Gold Fury being looked at entirely by one night at land. Tycho drums comes in from way in the backside. The Gold Fury does eventually go down, and Forge of Vulcan's in some trouble too. Crimson on the killing spree on the rise and having a great game so far. Crimson, though, he's got to look to get away and create some distance from himself. Keegan and Pitbull instead. No, looking to return fire of the damage, assuming that he's already dead, just trying to see what more he can dish out. That Gold Fury was confirmed, by the way, uh, for One Night at Land. It was a nice attempt off the Tycho Drum, but the Gold Spike went in favor of One Night at Land. And that's going to close the gap just a little bit more so. And probably the cleanest One Night at Land have looked this entire set so far. Right, and it still wasn't all that clean. And I agree with you. That is the best fight they've had. And it still was kind of all over the place as J-Pro gets smacked. But this is more on Passion, I think, than One Night at Land. Passion are forcing One Night at Land to play this scatter, to play this haphazardly and chaotically. Right. And uh, Passion is just, you know, working amidst the chaos and making it uh, happen because this is a team with a lot of experienced players and, and a lot of synergy I think already pre-developed as well because they are players who have all played together before but uh, I can't really say the same for One Night at Land there's some new faces sprinkled in with the older ones and sure. while you've got uh, veteran members like Keegan that can help to lead the charge from the ADC position it's tough to shot call I think a lot of that has to fall onto the heads of j and Soul Reaper. And those two just seem like they're kind of struggling to, to fit all the puzzle pieces together immediately. They haven't been in a lineup the way they don't want. As they taunt back in Folger Vulcan, another one of those veteran players. Soul Reaper, though, does at least make it one for one. A support for mid favors one night at land, at least so far, until Delny comes in and finds Keegan quite easily and takes him down. Fiddle Ghost has the Aegis that keeps him alive. And now suddenly Pitbull is in enemy territory too far forward. He's been rooted. He's been locked down. But can anyone find the executes? It gets Soul Reaper point blank. And that sets up one more. Delny didn't want to ult the Sun Wukong, <laughs> just in case anybody might have been watching. And don't worry, Delany, we all worry. I'm proud of you. He, it, it was the decoy, and he didn't head towards it. Pitbull is very safely backing, but that was three for one, I believe, overall in favor of Passion. They only lose Crimson, so they can threaten the tier one, and now this tier two as well. Just we were talking about how scattered Passion has made these team fights. They do perhaps their cleanest and most concise one of the game, and it starts with taunting in Forger Vulcan in front of the tier one. Blowing up the front line has been a very effective strategy for a lot of different teams on a lot of different competitive levels, Finch. And I, I think that it's the right direction to take. Sometimes Forger Vulcan, I don't think he's even had a chance to use his ult, but right now it's a complete toss-up for the Pyromancer. Passion are going to be able to secure it, but a massive through space in time just sends Eye and the Hamster on the run. But I've loved Crimson's play this game. He at least is able to help find a kill in the back end and secure the objection. We cannot say the same for Fatal Ghost, though. He ends up falling. J-Pro working together with Pitbull to clean up the kill onto the Hunter to make it one for one. Support for Hunter so far. As Taco, Fa Forger Vulcan has felt like paper this game. Is it the experience difference? Because he has the protections. What's made him so thin? It's just so much damage. It's a That's lot. just how much damage Passion are putting out. Look at Delany. He's leading the charts right behind him. He's got his Hunter, Fatal Ghost. And just below that, Another frontliner, but hold that thought, Finch, because right now J4 are looking to finally punish this Jengaru Hera jungle. Will be successful, but in the process, winds up losing his own carries. Ends up being two for two, it looks like, if you factor in Fatal Ghost, who fell earlier on. Trying to even things up. Finally, Jengaru gets punished. He does end up falling 3 1 and 8 as J Pro sought him out. Even with the Argus there, because Jengaru dropped it right on top of him, it was not enough. 
But how have you felt about this Hera throughout the game? I think she's been huge. She's been impactful. I mean, clearly, 3-1-8. and eight. But has it been as a jungler, or has it just been as another strong mage on your team that you'd always want to have? You don't take Hera as a jungler in this position. You no. take Hera because she can clear the jungle effectively, but her team fighting uh, assistance has just been so much for passion here as Forger Vulcan all by his lonesome because I don't really count Pitbull as backup here when there's all four members of Passion just grouped around him. Yeah, Pitbull's not a backup. He's a front man. He's yelling timber as he comes crashing in on top of Hamster. It's not enough, though, to save the life of Vulcan, who absolutely ends up following, or ends up falling, rather, as Passion continues to go wherever it is they want to in the map. But this still is not as big a lead as you might think. They're only up 3k gold. It's experience that I think is really the bigger difference maker between these two teams oh. as they do catch J Pro in the backside. Jungaru can't hit him with the ultimate. They force out the Aegis. He's trying to make his way to the portal and just barely gets there. Aegis? Keegan's Aegis at that, not Delany. Delany used the, the fatal strike and this timing just could not have been better though from Passion. And that's what I'm really keeping an eye on. I feel like Passion has kind of funneled in. A nice attempt, by the way, from Soul Reaper uh, and looking to try and steal away the Gold Fury, but no one in position from One Night at Land because Passion forced them all away. Yeah. I, I love seeing teams coordinate like this around objective play because it, it just shows how, I, I think, knowledgeable they are as a team and how much synergy as a team that they truly have. And I think Passion have put that on display here so far in this game. When the clean and fights have been happening, they've all been Passion so far, right? That pick on the tier one in mid comes to mind for me. When they've when there's been these clear, concise shot calls have all come from Passion. And for me, One Night at LAN have not been able to get their their carries into a comfortable position, specifically Soul Reaper and J Pro. Look how far down they are on the damage charge. They've not been able to be in comfortable positions in this game so far. And for me, a lot of this draws back to what we were just discussing with this Hera jungle. You know, has she been successful as a jungler? Or has she been successful as another mage component? And it, we're drawing ourselves the latter of those two suggestions because yeah, of the so. fact that Argus is just been more useful around objective play. Jeporu has really struggled, I think, to find those effective sonic booms to really tear open a team fight and send the backline from Passion scattering. Delany and I am the Hamster as well have done a fantastic job at taking turns. If one of them is initiating, the other is guaranteed to be on the carries. Exactly, which is why I like that Jpro has gone this crit style. He has not had a time to stick to anyone so far. So if he can get off a couple shots, then that just might be enough, as we see as he hunts down Delny, who is able to make it out just barely on the right-hand side. He's trying. He's saying that, okay, if I'm only going to get a couple hits off in a fight, well, I'm going to at least make them count. And for all that One Night at LAN have struggled throughout this game so far, in a single instant, this could definitely turn it's into their favor. It, it's still so incredibly close. Yeah. Uh, Passion can't really afford to get lazy now, because yes, you've got <laughs> a, a slight lead. Well... What? Crimson. He gets away from it all. Still on the run. <laughs> I love it. They recognize he's lazy backing, so they threw space and time, Sonic Boom, but he somehow comedically gets away from all of it just barely, and he's able to make it back to the Tier 1 tower, basically at base ride and walk speed. Finally, the Thunder Crash comes out at the end. Fatal Ghost has about an archery that allows him to disengage, but one night at land have at least forced Passion out. I say that, but then they drop down the Argus. Jungaru wants to push in. Great portal backwards, though. Going to keep Soul Reaver out of kill opportunities for now. Jingaru also, I think, ended up losing his Purification Beads in the process. So a lot of the actives from Passion been forced out now. One night at land, they're going to get their opportunity to back, maybe even buy for a few of them. But Jiporu can still play defense around this Fire Giant. Pitbull's got to be careful now, though. He might have just bit off a little bit more than he could chew. Yeah, this is not a hit single right now. he got to find some kind of way to get out of here as Crimson does end up stunned. It looks like the initial part of the route lands. He's got to use the portal to disengage, but the rest of Passion have now regrouped. They've got Crimson back and healthy, but they're going to settle for the Pyromancer instead. There can only be one true monkey god. And for right now, it's Crimson on the Raijin. That's right, yes. If, we, if we're comparing the two, I think Crimson's impact has been... Oh, far more, but I, I, we, I don't want to talk too bad about Pitbull. He has done well, but you're right. Right now, it's this Ryzen for me that's causing a lot of problems. I just think that Pitbull has struggled to be aggressive with and the stay rest relevant of his as a team. musician. Well, <laughs> I mean, well, <laughs> this sounds like a little <laughs> bit of a deeper uh, 
<laughs> something deeper for you, Finch. But I'm talking about Pitbull, the player. Right. He's done fine. He's done, he's done perfectly Better fine for this match, but I definitely wish that he would choose to play aggressive when he has actual backup from his team. Right. I feel like a lot of times we're seeing Pitbull uh, play aggressive, but it's into like four or five different members of Passion. And meanwhile, the only one to really Goodness. play, you know, follow up for him is, is Forger Vulcan uh, as a level 15 Terra. And I think that's really what Forger Vulcan's problem has been because they've kind of gone right through him so far in this game. Level 15. And in relation to the carries on the side of Passion, that's just not enough. I mean, Crimson, Jungaru, and Delny have all been kind of having their way with this Terra. I like the Spirit Robe coming in next. That's going to provide some much needed mitigation to go along with that Onis. But I just don't know if it's enough, Taco. He's been folding. One night at land, though, I think that they're definitely approaching some of those late game power spikes we've been talking about. And... I think even a single through space of time, a single supernova, there's just so many different single moment plays that could occur now uh, from one night at land that could definitely turn this game on its head. Soul Reaper's been taunted in. I don't believe he had any relics to help him out at the start of that fight, but they weren't able to, com to complete the kill. Forger Vulcan will fall back. In fact, he'll set up for Fatal Ghost to get deleted. He claims the kill. That will be through space and time on cooldown, but Jungaru evens things up. It's Hunter for Hunter so far. But now J-Pro wants a little bit more, closing the distance onto Crimson, but he's in the Tycho drums, forcing everyone back. Lockdown stun. He has the beads to get off what damage he can, and that means J-Pro gets one more kill. But I think that they're sorely missing out on Jengaru's damage. Don't Passion me. just being dismantled right now by one night at land. Something that I was not expecting to have to say anytime soon here as Soul Reaper looking to play aggressive still into I Am The Hamster. That's just what he's able to do now knowing that Crimson and Fatal Ghost are still <laughs> dead for another few seconds. Look at that bag from Delny. That actually goes And off. the Aegis. And the Aegis. So that means he will indeed be able to fall back. One night at land though, they don't feel comfortable enough going for the Fire Giant, so they will rotate over and instead grab what I believe to be the Primal Fury, so they can do some extra damage to these camps the next time they come around. This is even better still though, because not only that, but they're going to get that 5% extra damage against yes. the Fire Giant itself, and this is an enhanced Fire Giant. I think a, one main reason why we haven't seen any Fire Giant attempts yet from either team is that they're honestly kind of scared. I, I think a lot of teams now with Enhanced Fire yeah. Giant, people are starting to realize it's not as easy as it used to be. No. You have to factor in a lot of, of other things and a lot of outside effects that you normally wouldn't have to worry about. And it's just so problematic, though, when you're stuck in, in this free fall. That's why I wanted to find it as for Passion because they've been ahead for so long. And yet, they still don't feel like they can comf uh, be comfortable in taking that Fire Giant right away. And for what it's worth, Forger Vulcan's been on six deaths for a while. I talked about how quickly he was blowing up earlier, but that's becoming less and less true. Maybe that's part of why Passion haven't been able to find that same window, because they haven't been able to get a pick as cleanly as they were able to earlier on in the game. They're doubled up in kills, but that's about it. all they're doubled up in. Everywhere else, this game is not too far away from one night at land. But someone tell Passion that, or at least Delny, who's still pushing forward into Pitbull. All one night at land need is for Soul Reaper to keep finding. Yeah. Well, one night, for sure. <laughs> but they also just need him to keep finding those through space and time chunk damages. That's what killed Fatal Ghost, and that's what shifted yes. the engagement into one night at land's favor. It was a huge... Well, just like that, Sonic Boom, exactly where it needed to be, finds a home on Crimson. Two autos after the fact, no beats for this Ryzen. All 20 seconds. That's all he was waiting on, 20 seconds, until he could expose himself in the mid lane. Unfortunate. I mean, with Rage like fully stacked and Deathbringer, even Soul Reaver only takes a couple of hits, as now Soul Reaver has to reposition. Jungaru is the one that forced him out. Fatal Ghost comes in with the horse and cleans up the kill, but Jungaru isolated in the solo lane ends up falling. It's two for one in favor of One Night at Land. They've only lost Soul Reaper, but they've gotten the most value out of him they could. And J Pro and Vorja Vulcan, they want to keep on pushing. Uh, plus, things are so spread out right now for, for Passion. You've got Jengaru all the way over in the solo lane. Meanwhile, there's clearly action taking place a little bit closer to the back Harpies camp right, from Delny. Passion. One night at land, looking uh, to bring down this tower rather swiftly as well. They got Keegan dropping a huge Supernova on top of Del, and he's going to bring him down to half health. But still, trying to hold on here is, is Passion's frontliners. 
Well, they kept that heat stacked up onto Keegan. That was more than enough to chunk the Tier 2 tower down. Delny and Hamster did what they could, but it was a pipe dream that up against four, they could stop that tower from going down. Now the Pyromancer can be added to the list of accolades for one night at LAN, but still not the Fire Giant. Even with that Primal Fury buff, there's no way they feel comfortable going for that yet. I almost wonder if Keegan's going to look to try and split push some more, because I, I honestly feel like if Passion don't respond to Soul split pushing, they lose that Phoenix. It, it's kind of like the Kronos effect. But if they do rotate, they have a possibility of Keegan, killing Keegan, but then they also run the risk of losing the Fire Giant because there's J4, who's and Mercury, probably one of the best objective takers in, in Smite. He's pretty good at it, but he's going to be even better now at killing Squishies as he just added the Poison Star to his lineup. He's got quite a few weapons at his disposal, and that's going to make him even worse. Crimson will have to keep an eye on his relics and make sure he can't get caught in middle lane again like we saw last time. Remember, that's what set up for that big fight around this Fire Giant pit to go so well in favor of one night at land. The Sonic Boom catching this mage without relics and only a couple autos after to put him down. I think this is a little bit more of what we were expecting to see from One Night at LAN in Game 1 because it's not like these players have no idea what they're doing. It was no, just not at all. so chaotic and it felt like they, they weren't really comfortable on the gods that they had drafted for, at least not for their core carry roles. And now, rocking the Giannis, rocking the Mercury, J4 and Soul Reaper, I mean, I almost want to believe that first game never even happened watching them play out match two. They're definitely playing better now. I gotta wonder if it's Passion wishing that they had an easier time getting to the back line. Something I imagine an assassin would be able to do for them here in this game as J-Pro takes about half HP. Pitbull keeps pushing up towards Delny and they bring him low to about half as well. But they're not ready for any firm commit. This is a poke trade and so far it's favoring one night at land. I say that until Soul Reaver gets chunked by the Argus. He walks up and accepts it willfully. Delny gets stunned out but they can't find anything more. That's a big knockup and a big purification beats to force out, but right now it's Forge of Vulcans. Maybe got to be careful. Turtle knockup going in for the confirmation. I'm the hamster finds it, but Crimson is just getting beatboxed by Pitbull right now. That's exactly what you'd expect from Pitbull as his ultimate's forced out through space and time, creates a pathway, but that's about it. Crimson gets away from the wall and the sonic boom, but not from the major look. A rampage now from J Pro, and the rest of One Night at Land continue to surge. Delon needs the front line, but he can take up plenty. He wants Pitbull, who's low in the back line, but a double portal takes out beads from Jungaru and puts good damage on the hamster. Delany, Anna, and the hamster both not as healthy as they'd like to be, but the same could be said for One Night at Land. Soul Reaper trying to find that unstable vortex damage over the wall. I think that might have ended up clipping I Am the Hamster in the end there. And instead of looking for this T2 Tower Force, One Night at Land gonna head over to the Oni Fury instead. And I actually kind of like this call, Finch, because getting that boosted minion wave might be enough for them to have an advantage over securing the Fire Giant. You could definitely push with it, and as you said, you don't even have to necessarily push with it, right? The Oni Fury minions are strong enough to push on their own, and then that can split up the focus of passion and open up a door for one night at land to perhaps go for the Fire Giant. And to check out Keegan right now in the dual lane, Pushing him up. he's got that Oni Fury wave, so he knows to just kill as many creeps as possible, keep this Oni Fury and all the waves behind it stacking. You've got one regular creep wave, you've got one Oni Fury creep wave, now Keegan gets the pleasure of backing a base, and hopefully one night at land, take a gander over at this fire giant, because Delany clear across the map, and that's soon to be shown by these minions. He'll, he has the teleport so he can rejoin the team, but he's got some work to do before he clears this up. Meanwhile, one night at land are pushing into this fire giant, but they still don't have Keegan, perhaps the most important member in terms of burning down this fire giant quickly. So as soon as the Oni Fury came, it appears it is already gone at this point without getting quite enough value out for One Night at Land. As they're only standing around the FG right now, they're not ready to push into it just yet. The hamster does get locked down long enough to take a little bit of poke. And other than that, Finch, we're, we're right back at square one for these two teams. Trying to find the better side of positioning over technical. this fire giant, but neither side really giving the other an inch. Jungar has found a nice poke onto Pitbull. The Argus has come out already. 
A little bit of backup there from Crimson means the magic damage is nice. Through space and time does at least clip, and they bring Hamster down quite low. Sonic Boom lands on the Crimson. Big 534 crit coming out, but the Tycho Drum does that much better. Fatal Ghost follows up, but Crimson gets traded out. It's jungler for Mage, as it's a 4v4. Pitbull up into the Somersault Cloud, but he's just nice. looking for the kill onto Jengaru. Beautiful pick so far, but he's got to try and make sure he gets out himself. And a quick Oxform transformation will ensure that he lives to see yet another day here. So far, two for one exchange in favor of one night at land. Forger Vulcan's got to be careful, though, not get stunned away. Nice dash escape. It's going to keep him safe for the moment. But Delny was way further forward than everyone else on his team, so even though he did hit a nice stun onto Keegan, no one else was in position to follow up off the back of it. So once again, we find ourselves slowing down. The one night at land still do have Keegan. If they want to force this fire giant, this might be a good time. There's only the three from Passion to defend, and they don't have their mage who would be the best at stealing. I think we've long surpassed the moment, though, Finch, where some of these more aggressive hybrid builds from uh, Delany and I'm the Hanster so start shifting a little bit more so towards tank and utility They're gonna have focus. To. I I'm right there with you. At this point in the game, right, you can't afford to stick around with some of these bridge items or, like you said, these hybrid in-betweens. You've got to go full-on tank, like the way we see Forger Vulcan doing, who, remember, almost 15 minutes ago, I was talking about how he had six deaths. Well, he hasn't died again since. Yep, he's, he's one tanky Terra. I, I don't see Passion bringing him down anytime soon without it being a collective team effort. And that's the, the main difference maker in a lot of these past team fights also for me, Finch. It, is, it feels like Delany and I, the hamster, they get poked out because they don't have nearly as many protections or nearly as much health. And then when they look for the disengage, they leave their carries out in the open. Uh, Crimson as well has definitely just struggled in, in general, largely because of the fact that J4 and Soul Reaper have finally started looking for the Wombo combo with the Sonic Boom, with the Through Space and Time. There's so much chase yes. potential from One Night at Land's composition that Passion can't afford to get poked out. They don't have enough damage on any character who can get far enough to the back line to punish Soul Reaper or Keegan in particular. Those two have been able to chill very comfortably in the back of the fight from what I've been seeing so far. Passion don't really have a way to get back there before they could just do damage to the front line with Jungaru and Crimson, but now they don't have enough damage. And this is where you have to start to ask the question, <laughs> was this Hera jungle truly worth it in the end? And I still think that there's promising moments for, for Jingaru. Yeah, of course. And I think that they've definitely gotten a lot of, of benefit out of this Hera. I think that where things have just really fallen apart is the fact that I'm the Hamster and Delany it just aren't the front line that they were at 15 minutes. Well, they've gotten some good damage onto Pitbull here so far. Argus comes in, but Pitbull's already in the sky by this point, so it's too little too late. Sonic Boom allows J Pro to get to the back line. His target is Jungaru, but he can't stick to him quite enough. And so the mage will make it back out. Instead, it'll be Delny and Crimson who want to try and flip the script. Pro ends up getting clipped, but it isn't enough for the full kill. And he'll be able to back to base and heal. We've seen this one so many times before already, Finch. With two members, three members, it doesn't matter how many members, they all keep oh, getting out so insanely low. And Passion, as well as One Night at Land, both forced into the reset. Fire Giant still unattempted. And no team can get a clear enough advantage, Taco, where they'd feel comfortable doing it. And I think they're correct up to this point, right? They have not been able to to win any fights handily enough. We've got 34 kills in 38 minutes. It was a cavalcade of kills towards the beginning, but things have slowed down now as everyone's just tankier and safer at this point. Plenty of action, though, between yes. these two teams. It has been very aggressive from both sides still. I'm actually a little bit surprised that we haven't seen more motives towards one team looking for a, a giant ambush. I, I feel like both of these teams have kind of just been very open and obvious about how they want to position themselves. Yes. And I feel like it might be more effective at this point, especially for Passion, for all of them to just group and, and maybe do a, a energy wraparound from way deep, come across the entire backside of One Night at LAN and, and then look to punish them inside of the, from their own jungle. Right. I was going to say maybe we'd see it from One Night at Land where they push in with Soul Reaper, but I think that would play against the strengths that have been working for them so far, which is that Soul Reaper and Keegan have been able to very comfortably chill in the backline and do good damage. There's no need, I would say, for them to force themselves any further forward. 
the onus is kind of on passion to find a way to make that initiation work. I think it's definitely more on passion than yeah. the other way around because one night at land, they can just chill forever. They have so much mobility with this Giannis that even if they lose a fight, as long as Soul Reaper has through space and time, Fire Giant isn't free. It's not free for anyone, though. There are a couple of relics on cooldown. Aegis down for J-Pro, down for Soul Reaper as well, who was just forced back to base off some good damage from Delny. But even that small advantage is nowhere near enough, right? I mean, even they, they have to stay back still and hope they can force one night at land forward. The only time they're getting damage on the Soul Reaper is from Delny or Hamster, and they don't have enough kill potential on their own. Uh, look at the vision spread, by the way, uh, around this fire giant pit. It's just all over the place. It's Wards every which way. They're just constantly out sentrying each other, constantly picking small little fights over who's going to be able to actually clear a ward and who isn't. And I got to say, One Night at Land definitely starting to get some of the advantage over their positioning on this fire giant pit. But I'm starting to believe Passion are, are, are almost asking them yeah, just start it. I think that would be a much easier fight for Passion, right? If if One Night at Land were clumped up around the pit, and then Passion could kind of spread around and attack from a couple angles, instead of these fights they've had now, which have kind of just been them butting heads directly, which hasn't favored them as much as they would have liked. Not when they're trying to beat through Pitbull and Forger Vulcan, who can shrug off the damage or go up onto the Somersault Cloud and heal up. Crazy to think that we are... This far into the match, though, Finch, I mean, uh, approaching the 42-minute mark and only a 2,000 gold disparity. I mean, it's irrelevant <laughs> by now, but it normally you even, expect huh? to see, like, one team that have been so clearly far ahead. No, this game has been even. Like an irrelevant 8k lead instead of an irrelevant 2k lead, right? Exactly. At this point, both would be irrelevant, but the point is that they are very close. Uh, well, we should keep our eyes out, though, to start seeing some of these boots get sold for Elixir of Speeds. I think we're already seeing it for Fatal Ghost, who has the Magi's Cloak in his slot instead of the boots. So keep your eye on these builds to see people drop them. I think the same for Keegan, who has dropped his boots at this point as well. Both teams still just pussyfooting around the Fire Giant, waiting for their moment to strike. And J4, I, I love this, by the way, from the Mercury. He's just so behind everybody else, really trying to use some of these map walls and structures to hide the fact that he's looking for the Sonic Boom. And Delny might be the first person to finally break this stalemate. He's got Hamster there to back him up, and Supernova comes out early to break the fight in half. But it's Jay Pro who tries to go in and gets immediately punished by the Argus. And Tycho Drum again just barely can't connect on the back end. Jay Pro does have to leave, but he'll have a chance to heal. And it's Pitbull who wants Crimson. He lands the Tiger Stun, the Cudgel, and everything else is all there. But Beads and Aegis gets him away, but only long enough for Forger Vulcan to come in and clean up the kill. Delany, though, looking to get some kind of return, will one end up one. picking off Forger Vulcan with a little bit of assistance from the rest of Passion, and he's still pushing forward. Soul Reaper now going to end up losing the Aegis. Polymorph is good. Oh, he's so I am the hamster, though. He's just so slow, but he finally does manage to catch up. Jay Poro trying to play defense. Massive made you look crits, but it's on to two of the tanks. So it doesn't end up quite hitting home. So one night at land, end up losing two. Crimson goes down for Passion, but still... How comfortable do Passion feel about trying to push in and grab no, this no, 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 fire no. giant at this point? No, they're going for the Pyromancer, and J-Pro is just going to come in and say, no, you don't. That can't be Fatal Ghost as a lone Hachiman trying to bring down a Pyromancer. I think that was the right call from Passion. Delany and I the Hamster were way too low for there to be any likelihood of uh, Fatal Ghost getting anything more than that Pyromancer. But... After this back, the immediate rush should be towards the Fire Giant side. And yet I'm the Hamster is in mid lane. And, and still that they can't get to this back line, right? How do they get Fatal Ghost in position to do more damage? Oftentimes you want your Hunter, especially with this kind of build, exec Executioner Kins, Titan's Bane, to be shredding these front lines. But can they do enough? They haven't been able to, to poke them down fast enough. Now it is going to be Passion pulling this Fire Giant. It's at half HP. But they have Pitbull here. He's going to blink right in and try and disrupt them. Jungaru already low, and Fire Giant DPS is all but stopped. I think One Night Atlanta has slowed this down. But Crimson, he's just looking for Keegan right now. Through space Sonic and time, boom. comes ripping through the pass, and it's Fatal Ghost all the way back. He was just trying to back. And J4 are going to clean up Crimson in the process now. And what looked like a possible Fire Giant opportunity for Passion has now been completely turned around. 
I think that it just took them a little bit too long to get back to this fire giant and start pulling it. And all credit to Pitbull. He did more than enough to delay them to give time for Soul Reaper and for J-Pro to get into position. Now it's one night at land who are contesting the objective, and it looks like they were able to grab it. Hamster could not get in position in time, and with the enhanced fire giant around their waists, they can start looking to push. Delny wants Soul Reaper, but he's not enough by himself. Hamster falls down, and one night at land finally have a clear advantage. It's a five up against two. And not even just two. Delany might not even be able to make it back in time to do otherwise. Wasting a lot of time, though. He's still fighting. Or wasting a, a decent amount of time. I can't really call it a lot. But with Delany falling for 75 seconds, a Finch. Long time. This is so much time that Passion's going to have to try and delay without a frontline. Jengaru, the only currently standing member, he will be joined pretty shortly by Fatal Ghost and Crimson. But three squishy carries looking to play defense against a Terra and a Wukong, that, that doesn't seem like it's going to end up very well for Passion Finch. Yeah, I don't know how John Gar can do it. He's not entirely alone. He'll even have Argus there to back him up. But one night at land, they're stepping on the gas. They're pushing right into the Titan room, onto the Tycho drums. John Garu is at least able to find Soul Reaper. Fatal Ghost gets Keegan, and that will halt quite a bit of the damage. A double kill now for Crimson. John Garu gets Jake Pro as well. They hold on. Passion send him back, and in fact, they want a full-on deicide. Argus here to dunk on him. That's a triple for John Garu. One night at land. Man, get out of our house! Wait a second. Can they reverse end? Fatal Ghost is dead, though. Yes, without they, him, with, they with have a lot of damage. With Fatal Ghost being dead, I'm not sold that this is free because they're also fighting against fire minions in the mid lane. But Jengaru and Crimson have the clear to kill these fire minions. And they might have a chance to return fire and at least strip away that Phoenix. I think the Phoenix is guaranteed here. The win is to be debated. Well, but this is when you're finally happy that you had two mages, I feel like, right? Is on that <laughs> Titan defense, right? They had so much damage in AoE, and one minute lamb were a little bit too clumped up. If they can get this Phoenix down, though, well, then your mages are doing plenty of damage to the actual Titan if they can get there. But look how slow it is. These little 52s popping up. I don't know if they'll be able to end with just that. Wait. Hold on a second here, though. That was a minion wave, but They're back. passion. They've had to... Fight back tooth and nail just to get this far, Finch. I, I can't even blame them for not feeling comfortable with looking for the end here. Well, how could this game do anything but remain even? Mid-Phoenix for mid-Phoenix, right, well, Taco? That's how it's been all game long. It's not really even, though, when you when you break it down. One team has a, a Titan that is full healthy, uh, and the true. other has one sitting at almost half health. So I, I think the advantage is definitely still in one night at land's favor. I Can they almost... drop ship it, Taco, with the Giannis? There's a possibility, but... They're moving into the jungle on the left-hand side. We see the pings. Oh, I think they're going to try and dropship this one. They okay. want this end. They've got the damage to do it as well, but this is going to come down to passion, having to just cut this team off. This is where you need to take the fight They'll at the very front end where the Phoenix, or wherever the through space and time breaks through first of, um, inside the base. That's where passion has to be waiting. Of course, not to get hit by it, but right. surrounding that area to drop all of their damage because it would definitely kill everybody. All right, well, let's see if that's going to be the plan. There are a couple wards here for Passion to slow them down, but One Night of Land have shown themselves some. They've pushed up this wave. They're not all together anymore. In fact, Soul Reaper has backed. So I think it's looking a little bit less likely that they're going to go for the dropship, at least this, this very next few moments or two. Well, if I'm Passion right now, though, all I'm thinking about is keeping this mid wave pushed up, keeping some wards down in the jungle so you can make sure no one sneaks in, and trying to get this mid Phoenix back to heal your Titan, because right now it does feel vulnerable. Well, Passion will have their Phoenix up before one night at land, since they lost theirs first. That's kind of just how it goes. And this true. could also <laughs> end up being a, a possible power play moment for Passion, depending on what they want to do once their Phoenix reses. I am uncertain as to whether or not Enhanced Fire Giant will be the immediate takeaway, though, for either of these teams. Oni could be big if they grab it and have another minion wave to push with. No more boots left, I don't think, Taco. I'm looking. I think everyone has sold them for their elixir of speed at this point. It's a 50-minute game, so you better have sold them by this point and bought that sixth item. But you know what? Go ahead. 50 minutes deep, and Jay Poro still hasn't upgraded that Aegis. And neither has Crimson. That's hard to believe. We're just nitpicking right now. <laughs> but, you, but that should be upgraded, though, right? That's it should definitely be upgraded by now. But 500 gold you know, to sometimes spare. I, I think that Crimson has honestly hand. forgotten 
about the fact that his relics still need to be upgraded. Yeah, they got it. Go upgrade them. No, I think he's genuinely forgotten. There's a that, chance, yeah. Like, about doing that at all this game, because uh, there's no way. With how often One Night at Land have been looking to collapse this Ryzen, I, I find it hard to believe <laughs> that Crimson uh, would have actively been remembering something small like that. So just an example, I think, of, of where even experienced players can, can make some of the... While it seems like a small mistake, that actually could wind up being a pretty big deal. And the fact that he hasn't upgraded them, even around like the 30 minute mark, I think, would have saved him a couple of deaths because there were multiple instances where he would die and his relics would be on that 17 to 25 seconds of cooldown that he wouldn't have had to wait if they'd been upgraded. That's certainly a fair point because the beads and the ages, you're exactly right. Those could both be upgraded at this point, but still, as you said, it's a small thing, certainly, but it might have had a, a couple of impacts throughout there a couple times, so there's no reason to not have done it. If uh, they lose say, right. this game, I think it's one of the little things that you can kind of look back on and, and like, review and be like, okay, what are some of the things that we could have done better as a team? Oh, well, Crimson that's was so trolling. so easy to clean up, right? Yeah, yeah because, so like, well, Crimson yeah. was clearly trolling. He didn't upgrade his relics for, like, 51 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> we got to mess with him from time sure, to time. Sure, sure. We all know Crimson is uh, absolutely nutty at the game, so we're... It's a small nitpick, if anything, because he's had a great game for them so far in this region. Plus, we're 51 minutes deep, and uh, both these teams kind of stalemating the other. Yes, it's so. very, very close between I these mean, teams. you, you got to call what you got as, from the caster point of view, man. <laughs> <laughs> well, one night at land have this this enhanced fire giant at their disposal, but the mid-phoenix back up, and the titan has now been healed. But we actually, I don't think we've had a siege portion of the game, really, have <laughs> no. we? They've, they've been fighting around the fire giant for like half an hour, They and when they finally broke in, it wasn't even really sieges. It was just a, a swing back and forth. This is actually something I'm happy to see, though, from Passion, because it was something we just talked about. I mean, they just had a crazy game-ending defense, and then they realized, oh, wait, what if we just did this instead of risking losing the entire game at fire? Well, Argus comes down and chunks Soul Reaper soon. As Jungari saw, he had an opportunity to do some good damage. He dropped it. That forces Soul Reaper back, and that's going to halt this siege from one night at land, at least for the time it takes for him to go back to base. In fact, through space and time committed as well. That's a very nice win from Passion, as Jungaru only had to commit the ult. This is actually kind of gross when you when you think about it. All of these teams, they have so much damage to offer, and yet <laughs> neither side is, is really finding a, a solid opportunity to breach. Not been able to find their opportunity in yet, but it's a split push right now from One Night at Land. They've got J-Pro keeping the waves pushed up in solo, while the rest of the team has posted up in mid, trying to find a way to break back in. Remember, Soul Reaper has used the ult, but it should be back up before too long. They shall drop down the Earth and Fury ultimate, and Crimson, the early target, he's low and has to run back towards the rest of the base. Mid Phoenix still standing strong for now, but it's finally taken some damage as the rest of One Night at Land are relatively healthy. They can keep on pushing in. Everybody focused on the mid lane Phoenix now, but it's Shangaru who's looking to back away. I'm the Hamster with a nice root stun there onto Pitbull, but One Night at Land got what they were after. They're looking at a soft reset, I feel. Doesn't seem like they're completely ready to leave the vicinity just yet. They've got a minion wave on that right-hand side, so they might be able to even look for a secondary Phoenix here. I think they have the opportunity. They got quite a few ultimates out from Passion, and they've still held on to the Supernova for one night at land and the through space and time. So they have the advantage in that capacity, though Jungari's ultimate should be back up before too long to allow for another Argus to help out. And it's not just that initial landing damage of the knockup. That's a beefy boy to have helping you out in a fight as well. One night at land, though, they definitely got Passion on the back foot here. And Passion trying to do everything in their power to prevent this game or for this set from going to a game three. That's Argus. They sent their assassin, the jungler, Jungaru, over to deal with J-Pro, the obvious jungler from uh, from One Night at Land on the Mercury. And that is enough to slow him down for now. He's healing up in the jungle, and he'll be back. But they've baited out this Argus. I think they're just waiting on everybody's ults to be back up again. They've already got the Somersault Cloud available for Pitbull. Forger Vulcan's got his ult ready to go. And J-Pro's Sonic Boom just became available again, so he can actually look for a Sonic Boom from the mid lane going in. Soul Reaper has already used his ultimate as well, and it's Hempster, who's very low. Supernova finally committed, and Sonic Boom teams up with Soul Reaper to find the first kill. It's on to Hamster. The Erlong Shen has been removed. Crimson is now in some trouble. He's been stunned out, and J-Pro walks up slowly, but the crits aren't enough. Crimson makes it back to the fountain, 
but that's mid and right side Phoenix both down. Tooth and nail, every single second has counted between 55. these two teams in these fights, Finch, because while one night at land, sure you're able to secure the Phoenix, sure you found I am the hamster, but that's still not enough for you to push in for the victory. Two Phoenixes down, by the way, but Phoenix is not even all that relevant right now, so much as the fights themselves, because right. all it takes is two members dead, I, I think, from Passion at this stage. And the respawn timers are just so grudgingly long that I don't really see Passion holding on to this one if one night of land can find the picks. The Fire Giant buff has finally fallen off Taco, and I think that's why we see one night at land leading, at least for now to come back over and grab that enhanced version and try one more hand at this siege, which has been slow and difficult for them so far. Really, it hasn't been that slow and difficult. This is the first siege phase we're seeing, and they were able to get two Phoenixes off it, so it's gone well for them. But can they fully break their way into the base remains the question. I almost feel like Passion can't really afford to just let this enhanced Fire Giant go for free, though, to, to one night of land. I actually would have liked to have seen a slight contest here, even with two of their Phoenixes down. I mean, it's two pretty ideal Phoenixes for a team to work around uh, right. in, in terms of obje or contesting that Fire Giant. So, rather odd to me. But I'm thinking maybe Passion looks for a, a fight, maybe trying to pincer maneuver on onto one night at land. That could be a possible turnaround opportunity. But I, I don't know. Then again, it's just... It's just tough, man. When, you, when you're dealing with a Giannis and with a Mercury, it's just all that mobility. It can really be frustrating. The damage can come from anywhere, so you got to always keep your heads up to make sure you know where it is. Keep an eye on these relics as well. Fatal Ghost, still a while away from his. 25 seconds on Aegis, though. Beads are almost back. A full minute for Crimson to wait on his Aegis. And uh, still a full minute for J-Pro as well. So there's a couple of vulnerabilities, though. It does seem to favor one night at LAN, at least for now, in terms of that safety. And Pitbull looking for the loop around. He'd have to go through the mid Phoenix, though, so they'd see him. There's no way this mid Phoenix stays standing for longer than two seconds. I, I think that Keegan's just going to make pretty quick work of it whenever they decide to go in. Keegan going to be forced out of purification beads pretty early on. Argus has been expended as well. But, but that was on the Forger Vulcan. Right? Uh, the cooldown is so low, though, for, for Jengaru, but that cooldown might actually begin to hurt when it's only Fatal Ghost to rely on for DPS. Psycho Drums coming out right away from Crimson. That's been forced down by Pitbull. He was able to find some relevant damage. Soul Reaper's low, but through space and time, it does clip Crimson, and it's enough for Pitbull to find the kill. What teamwork between one night at land. That's going to open up these doors. Mid Phoenix finally comes down. Del Nilo, so is Fatal Ghost. They have to fall back to the fountain, but he doesn't get the chance. Keegan blows him up with the Supernova, and one night at land, they finally want to blow this game wide open. Passion. Unable to hold on for much longer. They did their best, wow. but at 57-57. Exactly. That's a pretty fun little timer to end it on, but really well played, I, I think, from uh, uh, from both of these teams. Yes. But one night at LAN, they just had the better end uh, of passion this time around, and you could definitely tell that the, that the teamwork and the coordination was significantly improved. Yeah, and I think that you got to give it up to, just like you said towards the end, the Mercury and the Giannis, that mobility, the fact that the damage could come from so many directions in the team fights was hard for them to deal with. I also wonder if the later that game went, if you wouldn't rather have something maybe other than that Hera in their jungle. Oh, I, I think that that's a composition you're expecting to close the game out by 30 minutes as yeah. opposed to, you know, 60 nearly. <laughs> Being in a full hour-long match. Well, this set's still not over then. It's one-to-one. -one. We'll find out a little later on who's going to decide it, but I'm going to get to find out right now what the desk thought of that game. Hey, thanks a lot, guys. Great longevity, by the way. 57 oh, yeah. minutes. That's going to be a barn burner. And we still got more Smite game to play. So with two games in the books now, and as I said, the uh, the turnaround here, what was the key factor in game number two? I think the key factor was switching from the Vamana to the Sun Wukong for Pitbull, specifically going for a more tanky build, going for the Blackthorns Hammer. He mm -hmm. doesn't have to rely on the squishy Hasten Katana Vamana build, and he was just at the right place at the right time, ending the game at 7, 3, and 12. You can tell he was just more comfortable in game number two. It's just... A uh, more classic solo lane character, I think, to be playing. Just makes a little bit more sense here, the Sun Wukong. And uh, I'm not, not comparing him to the Vamana, of course. Comparing him to the... Uh, <clears throat> that's the, the uh, Jungle Hera. Very interesting choice there. So, 
I don't actually hate the Jungle Hera, but it's not something that really makes sense on paper. Why would we see Passion pick that character up? I think it's the gank factor. The Polymorph CC into the Knockup CC, if you can make that presence felt, mid lane, side lane, whatever, that's the kind of transition you can kind of roll into objectives. And Yangaro had a good game in terms of the scoreline, but team-wise, it just wasn't enough because of the sheer mobility, I think, from One Night at Land. It's hard to get rid of, or get away, rather, from a Mercury and a Giannis, and then you got a good team fighting aspect with this Terra. Also not the first time that we've seen Yangaro play the jungle Hera, so you know, not a surprise there. At the end of the day, one night at LAN wind up taking this one, uh, kind of, uh, kind of handily too. It was interesting though. It took them two opportunities. Really good play coming out from Passion to shove them out of the base. Around 44 minutes ish, I think I want to say we saw the first push in, and that defense was really impressive. It is very easy to defend, I think, uh, on the, the side of one night at LAN. I think the Giannis portals as well, being able to weave in and out of the action is what you really have to rely on. I think the composition from Passion was not all inish, but it's sure. very committal where you have an Erlong Shen and an Achilles frontliner. The poke distance, you're relying on the Hera in mm -hmm. the jungle roll. And if you don't have the peels for her, if she ever gets poked out, well, she just has to back to base.